Uh, I wonder if you th what, uh, how we should view this pivot towards law and order, or maybe it isn't a pivot, maybe we'd already always expect President Trump to put himself on a strong law and order uh, platform. How well do you see that going for him in November? Do we have any examples of that from history to draw on? Well, uh, good morning, uh, Anna. He's certainly going to um, press the law and order button. We know that. He's also going to press the China button. We know that too. In a lot of data that we've had since this crisis erupted, we've seen how Americans have become increasingly concerned about China uh, as an issue, uh, and Trump's clearly going to target that. But more generally, if we look under the bonnet of the data, he's still got a way to go. In the polls, Joe Biden um, has led in about 47 of the last 50 national polls. Uh, now, even in some of those swing states, yes, Trump's been ahead in a few, but actually overall, um, it's Biden who seemed to uh, be on the front foot. The key question for Biden, which I do think this crisis plays into, however, is uh, turnout. He's got to get turnout among African-Americans, suburban women, and white men without college degrees up dramatically. Uh, will this crisis help that turnout mission? I think that's the open question. Yeah, we've certainly seen many voices from the black community calling on those who might be engaged in protest activity right now to take those protests to the ballot booth uh, come November or, or indeed earlier. Uh, Matthew, there's this old adage, it's the economy stupid, of course, when it comes to the US election and elections in many other places. Of course, the US economy is in trouble, but globally the economy is are in trouble and we all know the reasons for that. So is that something that is going to stick to politically elected leaders right now? Or do, can they manage to, to, to uh, chart a course away from their economic fundamentals? Well, of course, it was in 1992 that Bill Clinton's advisor famously said it's the economy stupid. But perhaps in today's politics, the line might be it's the culture stupid. Because over the past decade, against the backdrop of the Great Recession, it's really been those identity and culture questions about immigration, borders and security that have rocketed up the issue agenda in politics. And Trump partly tapped into that. He grasped something that few politicians at the time had grasped, which is that it is easier for the right to move left on economics than it is for the left to move right on culture. So Trump offered that potent combination of being tough on borders and um, being tough on uh, immigrants and certainly veering into xenophobia at times. But he also called for economic protectionism, bringing businesses home, you know, doing that sort of more almost leftish um, position on the economy. Now, look at where we are today, Anna. If anything, I think you could argue that um, the Democrats are going to meet Trump on that protectionism. China and nearshoring and bringing businesses back to the US will be a massive issue. But Trump is still going to have that volume turned up on those culture questions, talking about migration, talking about the border wall, talking about China and all these kinds of things. So I think the one thing is clear to me, it's going to be a very messy election. It's going to be, I think, in some respects, a race to the bottom in terms of the arguments that are deployed. Um, but it's a coin toss to me. It's 50-50. And let's jump the Atlantic, if you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Matthew, and talk about what's going on a little closer to, to both our homes here in the UK. I was looking at some of the polling over the weekend, and it seems that the Conservative Party uh, dropping in those polls. Labour only four points behind in one opinion poll that I saw, an opinion poll by opinion, um, over the weekend. How much do you think the overall handling of the coronavirus and the specifics around Dominic Cummings and that saga, how much is that something that the Conservatives can recover from from here? Well, there's absolutely no doubt that the Conservatives have taken a hit in the opinion polls. And what we've seen um, underneath the headlines is that the Labour Party and Keir Starmer have basically been picking off some low hanging fruit. They're winning back some um, uh, votes they lost to the Liberal Democrats. They're winning back some Labour leaners. And that's taking them from around 32, 33 in the polls to around 37, 38. And that's that's bringing the Conservative lead all the way down from around 22 points, where it was at the beginning of this crisis, to in the latest polls around five points. So the race has certainly narrowed. But of course, if you're a conservative, you might point to the fact that your party is still above that magic 40% threshold that the conservatives used to dream of getting to. You know, they are still today 
on 42, 43 percent of the vote. And their support does look quite durable. To that, we might add that Boris Johnson does not have to worry about an election for uh, you know, at least four years. And what he's really hoping, of course, is that once this crisis moves away, he can get back to what he wanted his premiership to be about, which was Brexit levelling up and launching what he would call global Britain. And of course, coronavirus has really thrown all of that uh, out of the window and turned Boris Johnson from being you know, what was going to be a sort of more um, identity focused prime minister into being one who has to worry about crisis management and economic competency and all of this technical mm. managerial stuff that Boris Johnson might not be that good at.